on that poison typing. Yeah, Florge is really bulky, as we can see there. Survived a sludge bomb from Nido Queen and Florges really did a good amount back to Nido Queen and actually puts it in range for Manectric to possibly pick up the knockout, or even if Florges wanted to, he could probably pick up the knockout as well. Although Manectric probably does not want to stay and eat, an, eat, eat a Earth Power or anything. Yeah. So uh, Manectric might want to either pick up that knockout or possibly switch out or in any way kind of get that position going for, for Ben, really, as that Nido Queen is just still there. I mean, it's so powerful. Like, we see its versatile move pool, and yeah. it can just do so much damage to any Pokemon on all of Ben's team, really. All right, looks like we get our first appearance of Tyranitar, though, this time. Switching out the fan row, Tom, and uh, bringing up the, the Sandstream. Uh, the Sandstorm with the Sandstream ability. And there goes Florges as well, switching for Ben into uh, for Awthorn, who won't be taking any damage from Sandstorms here. The hidden power, though, Will it be able to finish off that Nidoqueen? There it is, picks it up. Nidoqueen out. And uh, in the uh, random Pokemon, the most obscure Pokemon, in my opinion, oh, well, besides Fan Run, of course, gets knocked <laughs> out after doing a good amount of damage to Forges. And really, that versatile move pool again of Nidoqueen, so important, already gone, not an option anymore for Michael. Yeah, I, th I think that would have been really, really useful against uh, that Forges in the future here, who has a lot of hit points still left. Now, we do see the Fan Rotom come back onto the field. Yeah, and one of the things that's really interesting about Fan Rotom is that it's an uh, electric flying type. You know, we have a lot of electric flying types already in the game. I mean, Zapdos is probably the more popular one. And uh, it's not like Fan Rotom actually gets an ability that actually makes it different from Zapdos because it gets Levitate. Mm -hmm. And it's already flying. So, <laughs> yeah, interesting choice, but you, you never know, have enough it. coverage. You never I have respect enough it. Coverage. I respect it. <laughs> All right, it looks like the switch back into Florges here. And Manectric Volt switching as well, so we're going to see a double switch this turn into that Tyranitar slot is the uh, Volt switch there, and it's going to go back to Ben. Who's Ben going to choose here? Now that he gets to look at his opponent's team, he gets a little time to choose, you know, what he wants to bring out. Right, definitely. Oh, looks like he already knew. <laughs> I want the Frothorn in, and I want it now. <laughs> All right, and the Air Slash from, from Fan Rotom into the Frothorn. Doesn't do too much damage, but a decent amount there. And a Fire Blast, though, from Tyranitar. Special Tyranitar into the Forges, who eats it up! Eats it up in the Sandstorm doing a little bit of damage. Barely any damage done, although right now Ben is probably really just happy that he did not see that Fire Blast land into the Ferrothorn switch. Sweating and, bullets right now. Right, and that definitely, I mean, that would have been really unfortunate if Ben did decide to switch there, but now Ben actually has to be careful because Michael has actually revealed that his Tyranitar has a Fire type attack that can easily knock out that Ferrothorn. Uh, Fan Rotom, of course, doing a good, little bit of damage with that Air Slash. It looks like we actually do see the withdraw on Tyranitar there, maybe afraid of a potential Moonblast or something. Gyarados firing off an Intimidate onto both of these Pokemon. It's definitely going to uh, affect, it could potentially affect that uh, for Awthorn in the future here. We'll see, but no, the switch actually uh, happens. There it goes, and Manectric is back to give its own Intimidate off into that into that slot. This is crazy. The Intimidates are real right now. Right, and uh, we saw exactly how great of a play Intimidate was last game. All right, looks like uh, the burn again on the floor, just interesting. Into that slot, maybe expecting the switch there, but we do see the Moon Blast into Gyarados, doing about 50% hit points, but does get the special attack uh, lower. Unfortunately, not going to really matter on Gyarados there. Yeah, Gyarados is really more well known for its uh, physical attacking uh, stat, so not going to be too big of a deal there, as a lot of the Pokemon are actually taking a lot of chip damage from the sand, and Forge is taking the chip damage from the burn. That's going to add up over time. Again, we see that the switch into Manectric actually was able to pay off for Ben's side because that Intimidate fired off onto the Gyarados instead of, you know, he got yes. Ben Intimidate off, which is always big. As we saw last game with that Garchomp being Intimidated, really just hurting Ben's chances. Yeah. And uh, that, uh, of course, that, uh, that floor just being out is, has been protecting his team the entire time from any burns, any Intimidates, and anything that, that Frothorn has been really able to take that. So we do see another Volt Switch again after the Gyarados going mega there for Michael. Oh my gosh, it almost picks up the feint. It's hanging on. That Gyarados won't go away. And we do see the switch there uh, for Ben. Right, and right now, I mean, that Sandstorm's probably not going to knock it out at the end of the turn anyways. That, it does look like he's going to pick it up there. The Earthquake happens, though. Going to gonna not affect the Fan Rotom, but definitely going to affect the floor just there. The bulk is real. 27 hit points and doesn't really do much to Garchomp there. And finishing it off with an attack down almost to 50%, but the Light Screen goes up, I believe. And Light Screen's actually a really good move, in my opinion, as Gyarados gets knocked out by the sand. Uh, Light Screen, of course, is going to boost your team's special defenses a little bit to prevent any damage that that Fan Rotom's probably going to dish out at it. So 
Good turn to set up right there from Ben. And one of the reasons why I believe Nice, and picking up the feint, though, by the way, on floor just off of that chip damage. Like right. you said, that it paid off. just three. adds up every once in a while. But um, I think one of the reasons why Michael's actually decided to use Fan Rotom over other Rotom forms is because uh, Mold Breaker Gyarados. You know, you yes. cannot Earthquake into Levitators because that would be super effective, and that's not really good. Now the question is, why Fan Rotom over, say, Zapdos? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, of course. All right, so we see a Frothorn coming in here for Ben, and Michael switches into Tyranitar. Yeah, and right now, that 3-2 to two lead, Ben having that advantage, really good position right now. Uh, Garchomp can easily pick up a, or do a good amount of damage to that Tyranitar if it really chose to. Yeah, it actually ends up protecting here, so we won't be seeing any damage on that Tyranitar this turn. Ferrothorn protects as well, maybe predicting that, trying to save that Fire Blast for the crucial, crucial moment. Earthquake doesn't affect Rotom, so no damage taken on that turn. Uh, oh, Rotom gonna fire up a will o -Wisp. Into Garchomp, gonna really lower that damage that could, uh, that could threaten. Oh, the Lumberry! The Lumberry! Oh my gosh, the Earthquake is still gonna be super powerful against Tyranitar there. Right, and really good rewrites there from Michael. It's just unfortunate that Ben's actually carrying that Lumberry. Um, Michael saw it. Michael saw that, that Ferrothorn is probably gonna protect, even if uh, Garchomp's Earthquake could not knock out that Tyranitar. You know, Ferrothorn would still be safe, but. You know, he thought that would be a great time for will but really it just did not work out because of that Lumberry. Yeah, how unfortunate. We do see the will again, though, now fired off into that Garchomp slot, who Dragon Clawed Tyranitar earlier. Didn't do too much, and we see the Fire Blast. It looks like it's going to connect. Oh, uh, it's got to go into Frothorn. There it is. No, the bulk is real. 36 hit points from a Fire Blast. Are you kidding me? Hitting back with Gyro Ball. Oh, Tyranitar picks up the Fade. This is huge. This is so huge. Can you believe that? MVP for Hawthorne. Fan Rotom versus Garchomp, Ferrothorn, and one more in the back for Ben with a Manetric, I believe. So, really, Fan Rotom right now, it, it, I don't know if it can take on three Pokemon, but, you, you know, can anything, it, can happen, anything can happen. You can do happen. a little guy. Yeah, Ferrothorn being able to survive that is huge. Most likely trained in special defense, or that Tarantar was not trained in special attack. So, oh, really unfortunate right there from Michael. I thought he had it, but... Uh, that four times effectiveness, man. Right. I really thought it would be good. They're still talking about it. Everyone's still <laughs> going crazy. This is That was epic. The Leech Seed from Frothorn into the Protect of the Fan Rotom here. Garchomp taking a little damage from the burn. Yeah, right now, uh, Fan Rotom just trying to stall out, see if he can survive this, uh, whatever Garchomp really wants to throw at it. And at the same time, this Ferrothorn right now trying to set up a lead seed. Probably the best move, in my opinion, to yes. uh, side up for a Pokemon to come in and just keep healing back. All right, looks like the Rock Slide goes. Rotom air slashing back. Not quite oh. enough. Oh, the flinch on Ferrothorn! Garchomp taking some more burn damage. And we see the light screen pay off so well for Ben because Ferrothorn still survives that turn. But right now, Garchomp and Ferrothorn both in the red. Uh, Gar Ferrothorn can easily protect this turn and possibly pick up some more chip damage on that Garchomp. So, I mean, Michael might still be in this. It all really depends on what it can do against uh, whatever Ben has left in bag. All right, we do see the protect on Ferrothorn. The Rock Slide from Garchomp, of course, not going to do any damage there. And the Leech Seed, which also doesn't, uh, doesn't hit through that protect there. Garchomp hanging out with one hit point! One hit point for Garchomp there. Oh my gosh. Is it time to double protect we? Is that the call? <laughs> I mean, what do you do? Well, even if Fan Rotom survives this, uh, oh, he's able Claw. to get it one on one. Yes, the bulk is real. And Fan Rotom drops the Citrus Berry. The Citrus Berry going back into the green. Uh, ben did not want to see that. <laughs> ben did not want to see that. The Air Slash finishing off the Frothorn, and the burn is definitely going to finish off Garchomp here. This is huge. One on one, uh, Fan Rotom bringing it back. New meta, baby. <laughs> New meta, Fan Rotom. We hear the crowd go crazy for this <laughs> yes, right now. Fan Rotom. <laughs> and the Manectric, it's the face off, the two electric types staring each other down. The Intimidate into the Fan Rotom. I'm not exactly sure if Fan Rotom has any way to deal with this Manectric, but it's still exciting to see Fan Rotom be able to survive both Garchomp and Ferrothorn there. No, that was that was too great. The hold for Fan Rotom doing a lot of damage there, unfortunately, into the red. Rotom air slashing back into the Manectric slot, taking it down to a 95 hit points there. And uh, looks like it might be fainting on this turn here. That was huge. Right. And that, oh. there goes the hidden power. Oh my gosh, who did? Oh, man. Who didn't want to see that Fan Rotom take that? <laughs> I mean, you got you to give it to Fan Rotom. I mean, it hung in there. A lot of players probably would have just forfeit, but, you know, Michael stayed in there. You know, Fan Rotom, you know, get the crowd going and stuff like that. So back to the drawing boards for both players, and we see that, you know, even if Michael is down in Pokemon count, 
it doesn't necessarily mean he's out. He's always willing to fight back. We saw him try to fight back, and I, I really just respect that. Yeah. You know? That was a huge hold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was too crazy. Uh, anyway, uh, guys, by the way, that means if we're 1-1 right now in a 2 out of 3, do we? this is it. This is to find out who ends up going 2-2 and who ends up going 3-1. right? And keeping the dream alive of top cut, as we see right now in team preview. Uh, one of the things that Michael really needs to do, he needs to find the queen who probably will not enjoy taking those ice-type hidden powers or even the uh, overheat from Manetric. But at the same time, that is probably his best option to knock out Manetric, who actually proves such a big problem for for Michael, really, because uh, Gyarados doesn't enjoy facing off against it. Farazon doesn't enjoy facing off against it. Fan Rotom doesn't, definitely doesn't oh, enjoy facing off against it. Oh, the fans are loving the Lapras, Dwee. <laughs> <laughs> How does uh, Lapras like it? Probably also doesn't really like it that much, but still. <laughs> Lapras is actually a pretty bulky Pokemon. That's true. It can, it can face off against Manetric. Uh, at U.S. Nationals, uh, John Hu was running an Assault Vest version, and that was really bulky. It did that not take too much true. damage at all. So Assault Vest all day, baby. Right. Lapras <laughs> is actually making a comeback. All right. We do see the Mega from Electric here, uh, firing off an Intimidate onto Ferrothorn and onto that Lapras. Lapras protecting, though, actually. Not wanting to take any damage this turn. And uh, Ferrothorn protecting as well, so it looks like maybe just get a little scout off. That particular move, the, the Fire Blast went in and it held on with so much. Right. It was like, right. it, it like, we did like 40 damage or something. It was crazy. Right, definitely. And I mean, props to both players. They both played an amazing set. Probably one of the more exciting sets that I've seen. Although, I mean, we are here at the World Championships. <laughs> yeah. All these sets are probably amazing to watch. So, yeah. I mean, props to both players. And one thing I want to say, Michael, Needle Queen. Yes, <laughs> I, I approve. I approve of that. Fan wrote some, I approve. Lapras, I approve. I mean, you know, Australia's new and I can face off against Manetric uh, at U.S. Nationals. Uh, John Hu was running an Assault Vest version, and that was really bulky. It did that not take too true. much damage at all. So Assault Vest all day, baby. Right. Lapras <laughs> is actually making a comeback. All right. We do see the Mega from Manetric here, uh, firing off an Intimidate onto Ferrothorn and onto that Lapras. Lapras protecting, though, actually. Not wanting to take any damage this turn. And uh, Frothorn protecting as well, so it looks like maybe just get a little scout off, see what's going on here. And the overheat from Electric into the Frothorn slot, and the light screen does get set up, so nice call there from uh, from Ben. Yeah, and we saw last game the light screen actually paid off very well. I huge. Mean, uh, it allowed Ferrothorn to survive, so that's huge, and that's going to be uh, five turns of it just being up and boosting its special defenses. Lapras, of course, revealing that it is not an Assault Vest set, so it will not be as bulky as, say, it possibly could be. Mm -hmm. um, really, right now, I mean, Ferrothorn saw that the overheat was going there. Definitely going to switch out, as we see right now. Yep, there it is. Uh, the switch into uh, Nido Queen might be able to eat that up. It's going to also. It is not an Assault Vest set, so it will not be as bulky as, say, it possibly could be. Mm -hmm. um, Really, right now, I mean, Ferrothorn saw that the overheat was going there. Definitely going to switch out, as we see right now. Yep, there it is. Uh, the switch into uh, Nido Queen might be able to eat that up. It's going to also that up. It's going to also lower the special attack uh, of Manectric there. All right, the overheat is real. Takes it down into the yellow. There it goes. The special attack is now lowered, and Floor just using Psychic doubling up into oh. that slot. That could be it for Nido Queen. Oh my gosh, that was an important Pokemon to keep on the field here, do we? Right, definitely. All right, Lapras substituting though, interesting, and we did see the Protect as well. Like you said, no Assault Vest on that Lapras. For those of you that don't know, if you carry the Assault Vest item, you cannot protect. Right, you cannot have any non-damaging moves. As we see, Lapras is actually going to be out on the field for a pretty good amount of time with the Substitute and Leftovers as uh, Fan Rotom decides to come in. But huge <laughs> knockout, huge knockout from, uh, from Ben's side to double up on that slot. Didn't want to mess around at all. Overheat, you know, if it hits the Ferrothorn, cool, it, it's going to hit the Ferrothorn, but picked up the switch, which is really important. <laughs> the chants are starting for <laughs> Fan Rotom. He's going crazy. All right, we do see the switch on uh, for Ben there on that Manectric slot. And bringing in the Ferrothorn again. There it is. And Rotom using Air Slash. Oh my god, the light screen so real. Moonblast from Florges doubling up on the fan Rotom there. Down into the yellow, but it's going to get that life back from the Citrus Berry that we saw last game. And there it is. And Lapras going Hydro Pump. Oh, how
how unfortunate into the Frothorn that's really going to be able to take that. Right, and that light screen definitely paying off against these two special attackers. Uh, we see Lapras again with the leftover is going to heal back. And, I mean, it's, it seems like Ben's pretty content on not worrying about the Lapras.